Every week, uh, except for last week, uh, we was going to do it uh, Wednesday, but I had the interview. No, but what it was, we fucked it up last time. Right. So we had to wait for y'all to get it back together and we'll come back and fuck it up now. Right. So we were supposed to do it last Wednesday. <laughs> then I, I was, you know, Grace got a gracious invite to do the interview with Mike McIntosh. If you are from Baltimore, he's a legend. If you don't know who he is and you're from Baltimore, well, are you definitely going to have to sit down and check them out? Uh, you know, just as a little, little, little tip, tip, tight little drip of ice. And he owns Architect Studio, but he is so much more than a studio owner. He is, as I, I've, I have lovingly, uh, you know, behind closed doors, have always called them the Illuminati of Baltimore. And niggas think that it's a joke and they think I'll be funny when I'm saying what I'm saying. When you listen to this interview, you will understand why the fuck I call this nigga the fucking Illuminati of Baltimore. So anyway, uh, we were trying to get it to do over the weekend, but uh, Will pretty much said, fuck you. He wasn't doing shit over the weekend. So, uh, which was cool, because uh, unfortunately I had, a, a, I, 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 I really got sick uh, Friday and I was yeah, pretty much, actually. nah, I, I pretty much had heat, heat exhaustion. And you know what I'm saying? I went down heavy, hard. So like, you know what I'm saying? I I, I crashed out probably like one o'clock and you know in the morning. In in the afternoon, like during the work day, Friday. And um I took off and I went in bed and I, I, I didn't uh I didn't get back up until Sunday. So like, you know what I'm saying? It, I, but anyway, everything's good, you know what I mean? But I think the, that that weekend full of rest was not only medically needed, but I definitely needed that time to just kind of like take a few steps back. Now it sucked because I didn't do shit all weekend, but be in pain <laughs> and, and not be able to move. But you know, other than that, it was pretty cool watching the whole world kind of fucking explode. At least you got some rest, you got some rest sleep, all that good stuff. Mm. I couldn't eat. Mm. I didn't eat shit Friday, and then. Uh, Jordy came. He was going to take me to the ER, but I was feeling a little better. I said, Nah, I don't want to go to the ER yet. <laughs> not yet. I said, Not yet. Don't take me to the ER yet. So we went out to the house. I'm drug dealing. Got some of that bullet sugar. He's been right back in it to win it, my nigga. Definitely not. That. Definitely not. Definitely not. My body couldn't physically handle it. I, I, I would have made it worse. Like I'm still, I, Columbia, bang, I still got some good. respiratory issues right now, like stemming from that that I'm still like healing up from. But anyway, it was a crazy weekend. So, uh, but uh, and I really didn't tell anybody. I kind of like just kept it myself. Uh, I did hit Will up. He never hit the answer the phone. But did you? Is that new? It's not new. It's not new. Are you sure? I just hit you up once. I was just trying to see what you were doing. Actually, and I drove by the shop Sunday. Well, like I said, it was like five, like quarter to five, five o'clock, something like that. It was like four fifty, four forty, something like that. That shit was shut up. It was a yeah, ghost town over that like, bitch. <laughs> for real, for real. But um, so what y'all been up to? <sighs> Pardon me. What up, Jim? Shit. <laughs> Anything else? Nah. Getting money. I was working during this week, sir. Nigga, it's been hot as a motherfucker. No shit. It's been hot for the last two weeks. Bitch, you sitting in the office. Mm, yeah, from, uh, from Shut up. 3 a.m. to 11 a.m., where as soon as I get out of the office, I'm in the heat. <laughs> so you get to the car, got air conditioning. Yeah, motherfucker, right. my shit ain't got air conditioning. <laughs> Yeah, I'm over the windows down. It's hot ass air coming in. Yeah, I don't have no air conditioning need, but that's it. Them right. leather seats do not help. And the three cars you got that do got AC, don't got tags on. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do shit with it. 
That big ass is Scourge got AC? Yeah. That's your motherfucking body got that house unit in there. That's your motherfucking body got that AC too. God damn, they got two different AC units in that motherfucker, yo. When you gonna let me borrow that bitch so I can drive out on the weekend? <laughs> so I was gonna. Let me let me. That's some self culture. Yeah, it is. <laughs> but it's some real shit, though. He <laughs> didn't deny it. That's even worse. You got way more accidents on your record than I do. Yo, my guy, I seen you drive it. Let's take it back to the minivans. I only got one. <laughs> the, the one I got I didn't right say that one. I said, let's take it back to the minivans. The minivan that I had when I was in high school that my parents had? What about the one you had in Atlanta? What's up with that? Yeah, I had a minivan in Atlanta, and somebody, we got all was in a traffic jam. The guy stopped in front of me. I stopped, slid into the back of him, bumped him. Somebody hit me in the back. The fuck is wrong with you, nigga? That ain't got nothing to do with me. Now, let's talk about your accidents, bruh. My last accident, nigga tried to drive through you. This nigga hit me while I was driving. <laughs> he tried to drive through you. Yo, yo I'm doing 35. This nigga ran right up. Like, damn, one nigga at least wait till I stop. This nigga, <laughs> said, this nigga was like, no, nigga, you ain't going fast enough. <laughs> Somebody or something. And out of all, it had to be a fucking sprinter van. Ooh. Yeah, you was going to yourself in the sprint. Slay it. Now listen, I know you fell out that bitch with the with the broken neck and a broken arm and a broken chest and the nah, he was too he was too shy. Then got the sprinter van, nigga. I'm That's like, money. I was first thing I was thinking like, the fuck is going on? I said, I wasn't even yo, I wasn't even slowing down. I was just cruising, speed limit thirty five. That's why you slowed them on the speed limit of forty five. Shit. Should've been going a little bit faster than that. <laughs> nigga hit me like it wasn't shit. I just wonder what that nigga was doing. That's interesting, man. Right? Yeah, I was fucking the full camera right there. I wonder what the guy like was doing. And any other fucking accident, I'll never see my sister. Guess who fucking rides by? Well, she stopped in the middle of the motherfucking street. I mean, cars behind on and on that. I know your motherfucking neck hurt, don't it? <laughs> Yo, how's your back doing? Hold on, hold on. Oh, hold on. Pretty much. <laughs> just left. Jim, I gotta go. Just call me later on. Yeah. Like, yo. Y'all related. Well, you know I need a fucking ride or you know, something. Y'all related. Yep. Yeah. Soon as that light turned green, she said, oh. Yeah, y'all related. <laughs> You probably would have ran the light. <laughs> you good? Uh, you not good? Yeah? All right, oh, try to holler at you, my nigga. Stop. <laughs> you say, you neck do hurt? Yeah, you'll run me to the hospital. No, I got to go. Yo. <laughs> Shit, I was right up the street. <laughs> yep, you are right there. The hospital, because it's right there by the racetrack. The hospital did. was right there. That's something you would have did. No, I would have took it. I would have stopped. Nah, yeah, you would have stopped. I would have made sure everything was okay, this, this, and that. It's time to go. You ain't asking the right question. The question is, what the fuck you doing over West, nigga? Mm. Getting off work. Mm. It's always, you know the fuck that part? It's always when I get off on time, shit happens. <laughs> <laughs> every fucking time. Is that why like you trying to stay late every day, nigga? Yes, because shit don't happen <laughs> when I stay late. <laughs> it's even when stay I stay get stay. off on time or a little early, shit like shit, that happens. Man. Damn, that's crazy. I get off one time the last time. The fucking wheel flies off the car. Yeah, that's some weird shit. I sat out in the middle of fucking 25th and fucking Barkley for two fucking yeah, hours. Yeah, 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 remember that. And it was on a Friday. I was like, yeah, I got off one time get the house jumped in this air condition. No, it was hot as a bitch that day. I'm sitting there. The sun is just I'm thinking baking to myself, why are you ain't calling my phone? In the hood. On 25th and You on 25th and Barkley. Like, the hood. I couldn't have been that far away. Because I should have been at all. Police sitting there riding right past me and shit. Ain't the anyone hood. stop him. Fuck no. You all right? Why are you in the middle of the street? Do you think I want to be in the middle of the street? <laughs> <laughs> well, I just decided. <laughs> so they hit me with the, well, you know you can't stay in the middle of the street. 
Once again, do you think I want to be in the middle of the street? <laughs> I was like, well, what's the problem? The fucking wheel. What are you gonna? Oh, okay. <laughs> and then leave. <laughs> I said, you know what? There ain't nothing they can do about it. There ain't no mechanic. So here it is. Two hours later, I'm waiting on fucking Allstate to come. They never fucking came. Never cop. This is like a four cop game. <laughs> She was like, well, I can't have you sitting in the middle of the street. I don't want to be in the middle of the street. I said to myself, I said this like eight times to three different people. And you should have said that to me. So she was like, well, I can get the car towed. I said, well, how long is it going to take for him to get it? Well, I have him in like 20 minutes. Do it. You sure? Yes. <laughs> no, I just want to fucking sit there and goddamn. If I heard another motherfucking oh horn go off, <laughs> beep, beep. <laughs> and the fucking part, I got the hazards on, so I'm just sitting there. Why the fuck do niggas want to run right up on your motherfucking ass right behind you? Like, yo, know, my God, I've been, I've been sitting here since you been way back there. The light was green, and I was still sitting there. I'm sure it's probably a nigga that drove past, saw you sitting there, and then come back down just to sit behind you. <laughs> And then it's like right in the middle of the street. So the niggas coming out of Bartley making that left. They all honking the horn looking at me. <laughs> That's just Baltimore niggas. I'm like, yo, my nigga, when you turn, I know you saw that wheel just all out here like that. I know you had to see that shit in the wheel street. Come on, get the fuck you on the horn. <laughs> I'm starting to get high on the What the fuck are you looking at? I'm like, but another nigga honking, and I'm like, I didn't want to leave my car. I wanted to leave the car, but I was like, no, I ain't leave my car. Hey, yeah, you wanna see it, man. Oh, he would have seen it. He would have seen it. Alright. <clears throat> so uh Phil, what you been up to? Um, working. And um my uh my homeboy got married. Yes, man, duties. Yeah, um, Was it like the movie? No. <laughs> <laughs> Needless to say, I was exhausted. Um, was you just standing there? You had a, you had a, uh, a groomsman that wasn't fully prepared. Um, several groomsmen that weren't fully prepared. What the fuck is fully prepared? Meaning he waited until the last minute to say, hey, I can't afford the suit. It's two days before the wedding. I need help. Dude, we've been telling you for two months to say, yo, if you're not married, I'm like, you got somebody to help. <laughs> he waited two days before to say, hey, I need shoes. I need a suit. I need. All right, dog. What it was black shoes, brown shoes. So I think we're gonna get vans. <laughs> <laughs> you wild. So between me and the uh, the actual groom, we scattered around the city looking for the rest of the suit. Well, this this whole suit we had to construct, and um, the groom got lost and he disappeared. And it was an eventful weekend. Um, it was in Baltimore. The wedding was in Pasadena on the beach. Um, the so um, we get so after the wedding, um, should hit up gunpowder and lock those. Everybody knew what that shit is. No. I think that was the point. They didn't want <laughs> niggas to be yeah, like, yeah. rolling I mean, up. It was a it was an actual venue. They do like weddings and shit all the time. But um, anyway, um, they hired a DJ. DJ was trash. Um, I guess somehow he found out that I was a DJ, and at this point I was drunk, so he was just like, uh, he kept coming to find me, and was like, um, hey, he kept tapping me on my shoulder, can you, uh, you know, give me two, three songs I can play, you know, off the YouTube, and I'm, I'm going to play it for the party. What? Off the YouTube? What are you, what are you talking about? African guy. So then we walked back to his setup. Give us music. We walked back to his setup, and coincidentally it was the same setup I had. And he was like, um, and he told me, he was like, well, you know, I was expecting, um, I was expecting this to be an all African wedding because the, the bride's parents, or well, the bride is African. But, um, Holy smokes. Yeah, so. Uh, Never thought about that. Yeah. Yo, so, she from Zim Zimbabwe. So, so, um, the, 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 uh, the, the DJ was like, yeah. I was, you know, I, when they hired me, they never explained that this wasn't an all African wedding. So all I have is African music. So it's just like, 
What were you expecting, dog? Like, the, the, like I mean, the, Baltimore. Th- not only that, you're a DJ, like, what, what, or supposed to be a DJ. Like, what? Have something, like, and it was just like, no, all I have is African music, and he had like ten to twenty regular songs. And like when we saying regular songs, like he had like, I'm sure these songs, these songs were songs that were requested. Like, um, he had a, a couple of Beyonce songs in which the bride likes Beyonce. He had uh, um, international players anthem in which that was requested because we walked out to it. Um, he had uh, uh, finesse uh, Bruno Mars, couple of Bruno Mars records. Mm-hmm. You know the regular top ten hits. You know, right, right. Those. and it was probably only like 20, 25 of those songs. Okay. So it was just like, all right, once again. It's the it's the best man's job <laughs> to make the miracles happen. So, DJ Pella's in the house. He was like, so I was so I was watching him and I was just like, he played one song and I was just like, so at this point my mind starts working. All right, hold on. You have this song and then start, he starts typing. No, I don't have this song. You have this song. No, I don't have this song. Well, what are you good for? So it's just like, <laughs> so it's just like, I, I mean, then I started typing stuff in and then once I touched his computer. He felt at that moment he could disappear. Right. Like, right, right, right. like he was just like he was just like, oh, okay. And he stood behind me for two seconds and I looked up again, he was gone. Like the wind. And it was just like I think it was at the bar. Like he, it had to be. Like I, who knows where he could have been taking the shit for all I knew, but he was gone. Like for nowhere to be found. And then so I ended up DJing and people were looking around and you could tell the trend of difference when I started DJing and I started scratching, he just looked up like Holy shit, that's not. <laughs> so it was just like. So you DJ just a twenty song. I DJ what I could for like uh, forty five minutes, and I got irritated, and I stopped DJing. And when he got another drink, and then he came back, and he came back from out of the shadows, and this is he's African too, so he could have been standing behind me the whole time. I just didn't see him, but <laughs> all African people is black as shit. <laughs> He came out of the shadows and was like, yeah, Racist. can I? He's like, yeah, um, I want to play some more African music. By all means, sir. Well, you like me. <laughs> You're getting paid for this. I'm not. So at that point, I was irritated. Like, why am I the best? And people were taking pictures with me. Like, how did the best man take over and start DJing? Like, how did this, like, and, and it was just like, at that point, I was irritated. It's like, this is not my job. I'm supposed to be drinking and partying and taking pictures, like you know what I'm saying. And, then, and I know he ain't charging no hundred and fifty dollars. No, I think mean, he's charging probably every no. bit of three to five hundred dollars. Yeah, minimum for a wedding is five hundred dollars. Minimum. So it's just like, so then I got irritated. It was just like, yo, and then I found out my mother hired a DJ, and it was just like, yo, you just didn't consider your daughter at all. Like, and her biggest day of probably our entire life. And it's just like. You, 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 who, the, the daughter? Yeah. I'm not answering that. You might just some ignorant. No, yeah. I'm not. <laughs> she's, she's not she's she's big, Yeah, she's 26. Oh, they gonna be the biggest. She, she'll get married. <laughs> she was gonna say that bullshit. So anyway, she was, probably do it like two more times. And it was just like, um, before she's there. It was just like, I mean, yes, they're gonna renew their vows. Yeah. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it, so it irritated me. It was just like, yo. You you hired a DJ, but you just didn't consider your daughter at all. Like I thought, it's, it's not your wedding, mom. It's your daughter's wedding, and you know your daughter doesn't listen to all African music all the time. <laughs> but it, like I said, weddings are a tough needle to thread, man. But I'm I'm not getting too far into that. Anything else you want to jump into before we get to? No, we got a lot of shit to go over. Bro. I was exhausted, but that's about all I. That was it. But that, 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 that shit's over, and I enjoy it. If she's just this glad it's over. Were um, time to get into the young fodder. The young fodder. Oh, oh. Also, uh, if y'all haven't had an opportunity, probably by the time this goes up, we'll also have the D Watkins interview. So we did D Watkins the week before last. We did um, Mike McIntosh last week. Uh, you know, we've got some other stuff coming up this weekend. A few more after that. So you know, link will be in the description. You already know what it is. If you haven't had an opportunity, the Rough Ends interview is phenomenal. I mean, right now, like, by itself, like, in the last seven days, it has gone under over 100,000 viewer minutes by itself. Like, that's how that's how much time people spend watching that joint. It's crazy. So shout out to everybody. Subscribe. 
then you can that, watch it. Yeah, that's that that actually sat down and, and watched it and spent time with it and enjoyed it. You know what I'm saying? It meant a lot to us to put it together. And I and, you know what I'm saying, I appreciate everybody taking that time to watch this one. So uh we get first thing we get into is the young fodder, the fodder, the young fodder. So uh Birdman apologizes to Lil Wayne. I know y'all heard about this shit. Don't yeah. act like. Come on, man. Wayne takes stage at his his annual uh, Louisiana Festival, uh, which is his his big festival that he throws to raise money for New Orleans, and he brings out everybody from Nicki to Drake to uh, Jay Z to this person to that person. Uh, Title sponsored it and did a live stream on Title.com uh, while. Wayne's set was going on, and he's going through his bevy of hits. Uh, 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 Birdman was on stage with a mic and took a moment, and you know he stopped the music and stopped everybody and said, "Look, you know, what I'm saying he said he, he he wanted to apologize for everything that happened, and that he loves him, and he, you know, what I'm saying and he wants to continue to, uh, you know, he wants to, he was happy that they get re, you know reconciled and become family again, and yada yada yada. So shout out to them." For, uh, for to Birdman, yeah, for everybody else, they weren't making more money. No. So anyway, next thing is uh, Ludacris calls out Takashi Six Nine, and Takashi Six Nine responds. It actually came, and it went because you know they did the stereotypical shit shit talk, and then Luda goes to do his big level movie shit and TVs and commercials, and Takashi Six Nine goes on to keep making hits. I mean. I don't even know what the point of everybody arguing with each other is, but there was no point. I mean, I know Takashi put out a song, and then and then there was a song that went around. Everybody kept saying, "Oh, this song was for Takashi," and I was like, "No, it's not. That song old shit." Yeah, three, four, five. Yeah, it was on. It was on the last album. That was a while. Um, Aretha Franklin passes away. The queen of R and B. That was a huge hit in in the world of R and B. She was built at three. It was like a day long. They said it was like seven hours. Yeah, it was like seven That's a whole work day right yeah, yeah. there. Nigga, they had a hundred pink Cadillacs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they said, bitch. Where the fuck a hundred pink Cadillacs from? Just pink Cadillacs. Like, pink? They said that. <laughs> they said that she had her, her funeral planned, like from beginning to end. Like, this is, they, they, all they had to do was sign the dotted line and say, all right, it's time. And it has yeah. obituary written and everything. All they had to do was put a thing on. She's the only one I've known that had wardrobe changes. Of the day I didn't know that she had wardrobe changes. Yeah, she had like two or three. I had no idea. I, I remember the red. And, and then they dressed up, and I think it was like blue or something. Oh, like really? That. Yeah. So I she was blood and crap. No, the red was for a sorority. Yeah, oh. she I talk about head and toe shoes and yeah, everything. Yeah, she had a red shoes and a red dress. I, I didn't see another change. Wow, that's insane. Well, salute to her, man. Like, uh, I don't know. You know, I would love to have a scheduled funeral situation already laid out, uh, only because I'd be afraid that you know my family, if I died before the rest of them did. Uh, it would be some boring ass church situation. Uh, and if I said take this money and, and everybody go to the Bahamas on me, that they probably won't listen, you know, and then I'll be stuck somewhere in the ground in some goddamn cemetery looking stupid. You know what I'm saying? And you guys would be more sober than I would imagine y'all niggas needed to be. But you know, sober. Shit. <laughs> I'm like, yo, my nigga, this drink's for you. <laughs> That's one. Thanks. So, uh, also, Senator McCain died. Um, that was a huge. That was another three day wedding. I mean, what, three wedding? day funeral. What? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Let's see. President Obama. It's like every time he speak, we get smart again. Niggas is like, yes. <laughs> oh, niggas was hanging on to every word. Oh, somebody with some common sense. Please just keep talking. Come on. I'm with it. Just talk. Talk longer. Oh, yeah. Even, yo, even Bush came out and said a few words. I'm fucking with him now. That's how bad. That's how bad Trump is. He wasn't invited. He said he can't come. Yes, McCain's family said no. he did not want him to win it. That's what McCain said. Yeah, McCain said, I don't want that nigga around me. I don't want that nigga. Vice President was invited. President Trump. Mm -hmm. so, then let you know you're a straight fuck so, up. That's pretty crazy, man. Um, 
Lauren Hill uh, was being called out again on uh, by by uh, was Glenn Glasgow or whatever, who was a writer on her first album, her first solo album, um, saying that she's not the acclaimed, esteemed writer that she that everybody tries to put on a pedestal as being. He was saying that she had a lot of producers and a lot of writers on the album, and that uh, and you know she lied when because if you remember reading the back of her album, it said all songs written, produced, arranged, recorded, mixed, uh, harmonized. She played all the instruments. She pressed record on every session. Wasn't nobody there. She she just did it all by herself. It said Lauren Hill, and he's just like yo, that's some bunch of bullshit and. He said that there's already been two lawsuits in which people sue to not only get paid, but to get their credits. And they won. There's a third lawsuit up now. And I think that either they already won it or they, they're on track for them to win to where they should be credited, you know, also to be credited on the album for their work. Uh, it caused a little bit of uproar because, once again, somebody's taking shots at her throne. Now, I've been telling y'all for the last decade, I ain't level, I ain't really been no fan of no uh, Lauren Hill. I ain't really, I ain't down for all the positive shit, bitch. You used to have uh, uh, fake hair with fingernails, and now you trying to diss every chick with fake hair and fingernails because you got dreadlocks now. But you know, well, anyway, moving right along, I ain't going to continue now. I have packed. Shout out to Eddie Murphy mm. for welcoming his, mm. how many kids is that? How many kids do you have? No, he just welcomed. He just had a kid. He just had a little boy. How many kids is that? Ten kids. That would have been my first child. Ten. It's ten child. I had no clue he had any children. First off, that nigga's no believer in pull out at all. Yo, that nigga's such a millionaire. What the hell do you need to pull out for? I mean, they about the same person. No, he's got four big moms now. Damn. They all bad, too. The one, one, one of them, Spice Girl? Yeah, you got damn right, shit. Oh, uh, hell yeah, he been knocked her up. I mean, well, that, that was, that's old news. Yeah. They was married, got divorced, and it, that's it. Damn. And then he got a new white chick, and they married. I forgot her name. But shout out to her, because yeah. she lit, too. Shout out to her. Um, all right, let's move on. I mean, unless y'all want to get into the names. I, at one point, I was thinking I want to get into names. But we got so yeah. much ground to cover. Names. It is just... Ridiculous. No, no. Nah, nah. Um, the next thing is uh man, the Eminem beef. Eminem drops the album Kamikaze out of nowhere. There's no preparation. It dropped last Friday. Uh set the whole world on fire. Uh it's number one in 80 countries. Really? It's number one on all on every platform. Uh he said he was surprised. I, I don't understand is did does he ever watch TV, nigga? Like, does he not know Beyonce will drop an album out of nowhere with no preparation? With the, I mean, like, he was, like, surprised that, like, well, I didn't have to promote it, and they still listen to it. Yes, nigga, it's right here. I just pressed play. Like, it pops up on my screen. New Eminem. Oh, okay. Well, go, and, and then you go press play. Like, nigga, what the fuck? Out? What the what fuck time period are you living in? Like, still got that 90s syndrome. He's still wearing them 90 ass sweatsuits and shit. Right. Anyway, uh, so the album drops, he gets at everybody. Um, he really did. And I, I, I guess we'll get to the album review. I don't know. I, I really didn't. Did I drop the link in the group chat? I didn't necessarily want to do a review, but I kind of want, I really kind of want to do a review on it. What do y'all think? Y'all kind of want to do a review? No, yes, no. Oh, All right. I mean, might as well do it now since we're segueing right into that one. I just really don't want to get into it. All right, we don't do reviews. Let's not yeah. review it. I, 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 I all mean, I can say is technically all it is is what's it? Eighteen songs of diss track. <laughs> it wasn't eighteen songs. It wasn't eighteen it was songs. Like, I mean, it was like I know it was in the team. I can't. It was like twelve or thirteen at the moment. It was all diss track. Just, just about. I mean, it was just about. I mean, it was a lot of shit talking. Yeah, he took some Sonic Risk. Yeah, he did. Like, <laughs> yeah, Sonic Risk. Mm. And that was one he call. got on a great beat, dog. And, and, you know what I'm saying? He got on the Migos beat. And he got on the Migos beat. 
style. You were expecting that from Drake. Um, style beat me go style beat. Right. Were you expecting that from Eminem? But he did it to be to be sarcastic. I mean, he still did it. <laughs> I mean, he did a he did a Gucci 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 no Gucci yes. or whatever. So were you expecting that from Eminem? I mean, nah. I mean, I wasn't expecting the album, so I'll yeah, yeah, okay, all right, true that. I mean, I, 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 like, I'm like, at this point, when I'm getting some project called Kamikaze, and I hear he takes shots at everybody, I'm expecting all types of unexpected, and that's exactly what I got. I listened to the whole thing; it, it was very interesting. I enjoyed it. I mean, life goes on. It is what it is. So there were shots taken at MGK. MGK actually did a freestyle. A few days before that, it was a Wednesday that dropped on Funk Flex. But MGK actually wasn't saying anything about him. It was really going, going at G-Eazy. was going at G Easy. Now apparently there's some friction between the two of them. I don't know what the friction is. I mean, after they probably don't even know. I mean, y'all go. I, I watched the freestyle. Y'all watched the freestyle. I didn't get it. All I heard was some shit talk. Oh, and MGK said he fucked G Easy girl, which That's I thought. That's what it is. That was so I was trying to figure out who he was talking about. I didn't know if he was, I didn't know who what the who the referee was talking about. He said he fucks my girl and don't make me don't make me call Kevin. I didn't know who the other chick was. He said fraternity rap. Nigga, I was like, that's the only other nigga I know that can kind of like go at it. And the only other reason why I knew is because G Easy dropped the response record. So I saw I was like, well that up. Well, that makes complete sense now. But then uh Eminem drops the album. Uh, and that goes wild. And then MGK drops a disc record with a video called Rap Devil going at Eminem. Now, let's get into that. That was, uh... Let's get into that. So, you listen yeah, to the shit was all it up. What the fuck did you think of that? Um, I honestly wasn't prepared. I, mean, I, I, I guess I was... I don't. I wasn't expecting him from going as hard as he did. I was expecting for some white nerdy rap for some reason. I don't know why, but it was hard. Oh, it was definitely hard. Um, he thought he. I mean, he wasn't creative. He was just doing a bunch of. He did a bunch of name dropping, and it was just like you knew people definitively talking about. There wasn't a creative thought about it, but I guess he was just that pissed off. But, whatever. So you're saying MGK? MGK, yeah. Okay. Well, what did you think? Oh, that nigga thought that shit out. I know that. He I thought, thought that, that shit, shit out. Well thought out. He I thought it out because... When did that shit come out? When did he like drop? Sunday. So he had that whole weekend yeah. to do it. So, so he, he thought it ain't Friday, like he fired Saturday. that shit right back that Friday, yeah, he that Friday sh- afternoon. He thought that shit out. He probably recorded it Friday night. You know, polish it up Saturday. Yeah, touches on right, it. and they shot the video that day or later on that night, you know what I'm saying, on that afternoon, excuse me, and had it out. The the world star by Sunday, man, that shit was out. And it was, it, I mean, like, it got close to a half million views in, like, four or five hours. Like, it was, it was buzzing. Now, this is the reason why I fuck with this, with this, this, this MGK record, is because he went at him strategically. He like, yo, nigga, you old. Why the fuck is you fucking with us? Nigga, you done sold a Why is he still yelling? Why are you still yelling? <laughs> why are you upset? Like, why are yo, he, why are you wearing a sweatsuit? Why are you still wearing a hat? Why are you still wearing these? Yo, he's going, he's saying shit that all of us been yeah, He's like 46 or some shit. Right. Yeah, like 23. Right. Yo, he was going, he he knew what he was doing. He, he thought that shit through 100%. I respect you, but. And at the end of the day, MGK has never strayed away from saying that he was an Eminem fan. He never denied had his 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 uh, affection for Eminem and the music and, and being a huge fan. And and honestly, that's the MGK just took the lyrical form of what everybody in the music industry was saying over the weekend. Like, nigga, why the fuck you coming at us, nigga? We we ain't bothering you. Like, you know what I'm saying? We don't have an issue with you. Like nobody has an issue with you. I think everybody got cock slapped and, and didn't know why. Like, why what the fuck? Hey, nigga, I ain't your bitch. Like, you know what I'm saying? What the fuck you know, bitch, bitch? Like, it, it, nobody kind of and I mean MGK was on some shit like, yo, nigga, you know, I'm taller than you, I'm stronger than you, I'm younger than you, I'll whoop your ass. 
I thought was all right. You pushing the edge there. Um, a lot of young niggas got their ass whipped by old man. Facts. But at the end of the day, I'm like, let me ask you this. Bar for bar, we think about it. I'm talking about in the battle. Who gonna win in the rap battle? Yeah. I feel like I don't know if M got it, yo. We just heard a whole album for that shit. And bar for bar, that shit was dope. Do you want to? Do you want? Would you listen to on some real shit? If you go back and listen to either one, would you go back and listen to the MGK disc or the M disc over again, just out of enjoyment? Why I enjoy it? I mean, Kamikaze was tough. It was, it was good. But if I had to, but the beat wasn't that good. No, I mean, no, I mean, as far as like the bars and it, it was good. But if I had to go pick one, it'd be okay. That super intricate, you know what I mean? Um, and Joe Button said this best, yo. Yes, yo. Nobody can make words rhyme better than you. Nobody can make non-rhyming words rhyme better than Eminem. Mm. Nobody knows how to make accents rhyme like Eminem. Like, no, all right, he is the lyrical miracle. We got it. But who wants to fucking listen to that for an album? Nobody wants to just hear that. You know, we want concepts. We need something to attach ourselves to. And I think that is what has been Eminem's issue for these last, every album after the Eminem show. Is what that's what we've been missing. We've been missing the presence of a being, a human person, uh, uh, the concept of a human being embodying this project. I feel like MGK is all of that. He is the personality. He's the passion. He's that young kid trying to make you know he's he's trying to make his name known. Well, I don't think I think Eminem now doesn't have that same. I don't know, but Blossom was not. <laughs> Facts. I don't think Eminem got that same hurt. I mean, that same that same passion he had back then when he did the Eminem show. That you know was what fifteen years ago. Yeah, I mean, I'm what I'm saying is that's why I, I think now he's just Eminem doing dropped it. in '97, nigga. Yeah. The first the the the, the, the Marshall was it Marshall? No, I'm nah, before Marshall Matters. The Slim Shady LP. Uh, yeah. We was still in high school, nigga. Yeah, I got it. The that Marshall, shit. that's what I'm saying. The Marshall Mathers LP came out probably the year we graduated. You know what I'm saying? He don't have that same. I don't think he has that. That's just like I feel like he has the same skills, and I still have like he has the same passion. And the he just man, it's not hunger. It's he don't He's know what's going on, yo. You just no, yo. You are living in a cocoon. You first of all. How you going? How you going to try to come off harder than a twenty-five-year-old kid on the brink of being dropped from his record label that's torn open enough for anybody to keep his name rolling, and you two hundred million dollars strong? You you just gonna come off as a bully? Anything you say and do, you gonna come off as a bully? So it's not that he's lacking passion; he don't know how to approach the shit because he hasn't accepted the fact that he's old. Eminem has not accepted the fact that. Yo, nigga, I'm mad old rapping, dog. Well, how how do I need to be old rapping? To me, that whole Kamikaze album is, I'm still like y'all. Ah, see me, ah. And we like, nigga, you old. What the fuck is you doing? Like, I feel like, I feel like, I feel like Kamikaze was the, was the, okay, y'all lost faith in me with the revival. I'm going to show you that I still got the fuck. You know what I'm saying? That's like Will. Well, he had the bars on that. It's just. Garbage. That's like Will pulling up to the club in 2018 with the Buick. (laughs) (laughs) We're just playing the old ass shit. You know what I'm saying? Trying to pull up in his where he used to be fresh, fresh fit, whatever it was back in the day. Try to go to the club with y'all young niggas listening to Uzi Vert and all that. Like, y'all gonna be like, the fuck is this old ass nigga pulling up? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he might still have a little swag. He might still have a little style, but it's totally out of place. That's just like the 50 Cent we get rid of that trauma project. You'll never get another one. Because the hunger was there. 
that's ridiculous, yo. So you trying to say Jay Z doesn't have any hunger anymore? You will never get another um, reasonable doubt. Well, no, but but Jay Z's not trying to make another reasonable doubt at that level. Jay Z's at a higher level. Yeah, he's not at that level, so you're not going to get that, right? You're you're going to get an older Jay Z. The point we talking about stuff that at this time in in his life, right? The greater point is is that I don't want to hear Eminem. Like he was when he first came out. I don't want to hear that. I don't want him to recreate Shady. I won't need Shady LP two. I need <laughs> I need Eminem as my daughter is twenty some odd years old. She grown and got kids, and I might be a grandfather. I need Eminem of uh, man. This is what it's like to be forty, almost fifty years old, getting through drug addiction. This is who I am now. Like he because he spent so much goddamn time in the house, he ain't got shit to talk about. Well, see, I don't think we were looking for that until. Oh shit! <laughs> my bad. I don't think we I were looking. My bad. I don't think we were looking for that until uh, until um until Jay Z did it. I don't think we were looking for that until until Jay Z put out the project and he did. I mean, we found other stuff that we wanted from artists. I mean, I'm not necessarily saying that I need Eminem to talk about you know failed marriages or. Relationships. Only thing I'm trying to say is, is that I need somebody to show us, show me. I need, I need you to show me something different. Uh, what he's doing ain't working for me. So, like, you know, that, yeah, that's pretty much. Even when he tried that. to step out and do the, do the yeah, I'm gonna talk about Trump and the politics of it. People weren't feeling it, so he went back to what he did best. I don't think that What's people weren't feeling it. He you know. should have put this album out seven years ago. It probably would have worked out a lot better, yeah. Oh, all right, all right, but we got, we got, to, we got to jump up out of this. All right, so this is the convo for the week. Fall TV shows. What are we looking forward to watching? What are we watching right now? Um, I got a list of TV shows that I can't wait to rock, and some of the stuff that I've already started rocking. Will get it started, nigga, because I, you, as soon as you came in, the first thing out your mouth, you was telling me about this particular show, The Mayans. Mm. All right, go ahead. I heard that was pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, I, it's, it's, I ain't gonna lie, that first episode. This was kind of slow. It was. I said, "What is it? What is it about?" It's just, it's like Southern Anarchy. Uh, it's a great. It's a. It's, it's a. It's another. Of, it's another um motorcycle club. That Southern Anarchy. Don't, that first episode it came on yesterday. That first. Episode, it was a little weird. Mm-hmm. Because when the one dude was locked up, Gemma was in. In jail? Yeah, I guess. Because it was like eight years prior. So she's in jail with Mexican niggas? I don't know this nigga. Mexican or what? Because <laughs> like real white guy to be. Facts. <laughs> but she, no, she was there. I don't know. She was just sitting in like the waiting room. Right. I'm like, well, when does this take place? <laughs> It's kind of sort of all over. The it's place. supposed to. It's supposed to pick up right at the point where Sons of Anarchy left off, because then some shit went down, and next thing you see, you see the Sons of Anarchy, right? So I was like, I don't know. but overall, I'm like, oh yeah, I want to see. It. I kind of sort of see where the season's going, just off that one episode, right? Because they they they, they um mule and um coke. Across the border, same shit they always been doing, and the nigga that they supposed to be um, building it for, his wife. So I think he did his. He's the last one. The one dude. Mm-hmm. So he got locked up, but she came see him in jail. So that was pretty much about it. I'm done with you. Cause he want, he didn't want her to see him in jail and shit like that. Bullshit. So that's popping So on. I see him probably trying to pop the bud to get to her. Then she raised the kidnapped kid. And then it just on next week's episode and shit on the Don't make me just not watch this whole season that way Benny watch it. Yeah, yo, you kinda hit me off the I, I wasn't ready. Like when you was like, Oh, did you watch it? Cause I'm like, I ain't even know it started. So yeah, it was the first episode. Yeah, yesterday. I, and I, and I, you know what, crazy, but I saw it on Instagram. Um, but I don't have regular cable like that, so I got a partial regular cable, so I don't know 
you know. So I'll just buy it, watch it. So any other shows that's about to come out that you looking forward to? I haven't caught, been caught up on my Better Call Saul yet. Mm. What channel is that on? Not sure. I don't. I heard about it. I heard it was pretty. Everybody's been talking about that. Like it's pretty good. Like it's good too. So uh, in the two shows I've been over the last twenty four hours, people been talking about that. The Lions and uh, the Perch. Okay. Uh, you got any other shows you looking forward to? Game of Thrones. Is that coming out this fall? No, two thousand nineteen. Oh, nigga, fuck. That's it. That's not. That's not. Yeah, put that shit out of your that's mind because you're going to be torturing yourself every weekend. I'm, I'm There's so many fucking good ass TV shows that's about to come out or out, and you worried about some shit that's coming out in 2019. No, I mean, it's. I'm sure it's something, something else I want to see. I just can't make my way. I'm getting blown by it. Like you said, TV shows, TV series. Yeah, getting blown Yeah. All right. So, uh, shout out to Jack Ryan. Um, it just that just came out on uh, uh Prime. I just saw that whole season. That shit was phenomenal. So shout out to them. They did a great job pulling off that. Um, the next thing Ozark season two is available now on uh Netflix. If y'all have not seen Ozark season one, you're fucking out of your mind. I keep trying to tell y'all niggas that show is a classic. That is one of the most gangsterous non gangster shows I've ever seen in my life. Uh, and season two is is just as ruthless and 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 unexpected as anybody else could imagine. Gangsters. Did you see? Did, I, did you see Ozark season one? No. Gangsters, no. Gangsters. I still haven't gotten into Narcos yet. You trapping! Oh, the slap the shit out you for that, nigga. What the fuck, nigga? They got three seasons. That shit is fucking ham. Anyway. Uh, Paradise. I only, I only got as far as when the nigga was in the yard. I think he cut him with the sword or something. Is it that? Probably. Niggas die, B. Niggas die every day, B. Niggas die all up through the shows and that shit. Um, I don't know if there's like, I know it was in between them. the first, like, and third episode. Murder. Um, so, yeah, that, there's a new show on Netflix called Paradise PD. That shit is phenomenal. Um, it's a, it's, it's, it's a cartoon, uh, but it's really high paced. A lot of it's it's not for children at all. This is strictly an adult television show. Um, now I will tell you the show is phenomenal, but I'm gonna tell you that out after the third episode, I stopped watching and refused to watch any other further episode. There was a usage of the N word. It was so unnecessary, but just because they white people really just wanted to be able to say the word nigger, like and not nigger, they nigger, they and just it, they just really went hog wild with it. I was just like, y'all know y'all ain't had to do this. Shit. It was so much. It was so much of a moment where you've already jam packed so many colorful ways to describe black people that's disrespectful. But you write it on the line. You just needed to throw the n word in there just to let y'all know that we gonna. Oh, you know what? Fuck you too. You know what I'm saying? Um, but in in his defense, they offend everybody. Every Asians, this person, that person, none of that. But I don't. I would never hurt. I never. I had. There was never a moment when it was like, "Oh, you gooks," or, you know, you hillbilly cracker crackers. But you need to use the N word. So like, that's when I was like, "All right." Yeah. But I, anybody that's into like Simpsons or like Simpsons on crack, like or South Park on heroin, like if you want that Family Guy, the edgy Family Guy. Oh, it's ten times crazier than the Family Guy. Yeah, it, Archer. Yeah, it's it's like that. It's like that and more disrespectful. So has anybody watched Bob's Burgers before? Yeah, but I, I, I'm not really into that. Uh, I'm not saying it's not funny. It's, yeah, it's a good show. I, mean, I, mean, I had no idea it was that funny. Yeah, that, to me that kind of goes into that area of all right, it's, it's, it's not enough there to keep right, me coming right. back. Like, you know what I mean? It'll be like, it, it gets too slow sometimes. Gotcha. And it's not interesting for me in enough of a way to make me keep coming back. And so you know, know, like family guy, you know, like that. Mm, I did. I can. I can literally watch Family Guy, but once I put it down, I don't need to pick it back up. I, 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 it's like, it's like, it's a good. It's one of those shows where it's like The Simpsons and South Park, where it's like we have a lot of fun, but we know it's not going anywhere. Okay. It's a bunch of great jokes. It's a great bit. It's a great setup. Let's do this little shut it down. Unless I, it's like if I was a weed smoker, I could understand how a nigga could get high and watch that shit all day long. 
because there's really no beginning, middle, or end. It's just a, it's just clips after clips after clips. So you can lose yourself in it and not freak out about, well, well what's going on? I don't remember. You know, you don't need to remember what's going on. Just, just watch it. Just watch yeah, it and be funny with it. Like, And uh, Paradise PD is kind of that way. But the thing that impressed me off break, I've never laughed so hard. And then they keep hitting you with funnier shit. So while you laughing, that, that you know how like most shows got that one big gut laugh per episode. I got the big gut laugh 30 seconds in, and then they hit me with another one like right behind it. So I'm laughing, and I'm like, hold up, hold up. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. And I'm laughing so hard that I had to pause it. I had to get myself together, take a deep breath, calm myself. And then press play and go back into the episode. And then it fucking does it again. Like, it's that fucking funny. It is. Or it's, I don't know. It's a bunch of cartoon memes. I don't know. Oh, okay, okay. But, yo, know, they, they, they just. I can just tell you about one part. So, the show is a, 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 a sheriff of a town. Mm-hmm. His wife, she's the mayor. And the son just turned 18. And the father doesn't like the son because the son shot him in the balls <laughs> while he was fucking his wife when he was like eight. And you got to watch the show because they show all of that. They show the kid walking in the room. They show the nigga balls. You literally see this nigga balls and you see this nigga get shot in the balls. And then, you know what I'm saying? So his he loves his son, but he hate the fuck out of his son. I'm so sure. his son always from a child wanted to be a cop. And the town's doing real bad. The wife's the mayor. She the, she hires the son to be a cop out of spite of the husband. And all of this hilarity is sweet. Like it's a it's a, it's a crazy show. So a, um, Big Mouth is coming out in October. I don't know if you sat and watched Big Mouth on Netflix. Nah, I, I've heard about it. She definitely watched Big Mouth. We like what she described to me. Big Mouth is, is it a cartoon. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a cartoon too. But Big Mouth is fucking hilarious. That shit's fucking phenomenal. But and then the the season two is coming out in October. Where uh, Magnum PI the reboot is coming out, which yeah. is don't want to see that shit looks like a goddamn movie. That's how much money they put into that joint. Now, uh, in addition to that, um, there's a few other shows that's about to come out. I'll tell you all about them next week. I didn't get a chance to write them down. So there's a Netflix movie I recommend, I recommend everybody watch. It's called Extinction. Extinction. Um, it's a Netflix original movie. Um, it's pretty oh dope. yeah, it's a white dude yeah, yeah, and the yeah. black father. The black, the in the father, black. The white dude's married to the black girl, and the black girl is trapped somewhere, and then he's going to get the the, the wife, and then, so the the father comes along. I don't know. You gotta watch it. <laughs> <laughs> I recommend a movie. I don't no, know no, no, no. What the movie is it's about. about. So it's about um. Now you're gonna tell us what it's about. Mm-hmm. Just I, I really just want to, I really just want y'all watch it instead of me telling you what it's about. Because it's, it's so you that, might as well tell me we still won't see it anyway. It's that damn good. No, I rather you watch it than me. Nigga, I told you about a ton of Netflix movies. Netflix has great films. I had no idea that a lot of people didn't know. Like uh, the Game Over movie I was telling y'all about. Yeah, that shit is so fucking funny, and it's just buried in Netflix. Like a lot of people haven't seen it. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of shit on there people would have like Stranger Things, somebody told me to watch that. And, yeah, somebody told me to watch Stranger Things. That's a hugely successful show. I right? never would have touched it. In life. Like, there's a bunch right. of Netflix originally. Well, I'm not into dark stuff like that. Right. You know what I'm saying? But I mean, I am. But that seemed to stretch over into the potential horror line, and I'm like, yeah. Hey, once you start stepping over that horror line, I'm not really. I started this. watching a uh, show, uh, Jerry Seinfeld. Yeah. It's called uh, Comedians Getting Coffee or something like that. Comedian in Cars Getting Coffee. Getting coffee. I thought this That's was... his TV show. This is some of our TV show that he's in. Yeah, he's he's yeah. He's, he's the he's the creator of the host. host. Or whatever. <laughs> yeah. I, I I I saw it. I'm just scrolling through. I saw it. I was like, holy shit, what is this? And somebody told me, holy oh, shit, then I got upset. So <laughs> his new episodes that just dropped a couple oh, of months ago. So the ones with Dave Chappelle, that shit just came out like six months ago. I, I, I saw like three episodes, maybe like five. Nigga, and it's got like four seasons. Um, <laughs> the first episode was Jim Carrey, and I had no idea Jim Carrey was uh, an artist. Like he's a he's a painter. Like and he's like phenomenal. Like, but you know, but yeah, I, I'm getting into that show. But, but, 
to a lot of other ones too. So uh, you know, if you, whenever y'all come up with something, just bring it to the table. I always feel like yo, Netflix is so much good stuff that you gotta bring it out. Like I was talking about Ozark. Ozark is it kind of went under the wire. Like if you really in the TV shows and shit, like I am, like a lot of people talk about shit. Even fucking Joe Button was talking about how good the show was. So I'm like, I ended up watching it. Um, I don't know why? Because I watched. I was just caught in between not having a show to watch. And I gave it a shot. Uh, cause I like Jason Bateman. And it, it caught me the first episode. You know what I'm saying? When a nigga driving. <laughs> I can't tell. You. But there's shit that happens. There's in the opening shit the way it's like it just lets you know this ain't what you think it is, bro. Like, you know what I mean? I I love those type of shows where they take that turn because you go into it thinking, oh, this is what the show gonna be about. Ah, uh, uh. And then they take that fucking turn, boy. And Ozark takes a bunch of turns that you never expect. Uh, and it pushes the characters into a, into a space that uh, it's it's just an interesting situation. So anyway, Ill Will's birthday is coming up. Is it? What are we doing? It's definitely coming up. We We're trying doing? to figure out what, what is we doing, bro? We taking the strip club. Yo, you want to go out? We want to take you out to dinner. What's good? Like, what are we doing for Ill Will for his... 50th, 53rd birthday? Oh my god, that makes me that old. How old are you? Nigga, you way older than that. Nigga, you was in high school three years before <laughs> I got there. <laughs> you a lie. You a motherfucking lie. Yeah. Yo, here he go. Look, look, so just, to, he was a super to, duper sophomore, yo. A super duper sophomore? That's crazy. Yeah. Y'all want the same question with Black? No. Huh? Well, if I was there three years before you, you did, three. at some point we no, would have been in the same freshman class. class. So what the fuck is you talking about? No, you just stuck in the tenth grade. Oh, so y'all went the same sophomore class. <laughs> what? Yeah. All right. So once, so once you got the sophomore class, he started moving up with you. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Oh, so you were the smart guy that that, that carried. Wait a minute. So I you came helped, in at the helped. last year of my three years, and I helped get his life together. <laughs> 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 what you did? I guess the niggas is like, yeah, you know what? I found a grade. I'm just sticking with it. <laughs> <laughs> and look, 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 so Will's the sentimental one. He taught me about yeah, life yeah, after yeah, the yeah. grade. Shout, Shout out to that nigga. He showed you the way to go. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't for me. I think it's still being in the grade right, right, right now. So, Tommy, what'd you say to him to make him change his mind? Come on, my guy. You got to be better, yo. <laughs> It's more to it than just the tip grade. Why? Wow, it's other levels. It's levels of this shit, my nigga. Wait a minute, yo. This nigga spent half his time out <laughs> in school. What the fuck are you talking about? So you ain't encouraging nobody to do shit. So, so fuck is you talking about? If you, they were socially so. promoted that nigga. No, they wouldn't. And <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> kick that nigga out if he was in tip grade for two years yeah, straight. Yeah, I don't think he had money, yo. Nah, if, uh, I, if I failed, yeah. they probably, if I if, failed out, they, they probably, probably built the gym so they can keep me in school. What are you talking about? Yo, shut your stupid <laughs> ass up. They can keep lying to me. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. If I failed, they wouldn't have let me come back. Nigga, they, they, they would have never let nobody come back. Yeah, they didn't let me come back, so I go back. They wouldn't let nobody come back. That's stupid shit, boy. Right. Stop your line. Right after my sophomore year. Stop dunking and dodging, bitch. What you trying to do for your birthday, man? Cool. Where? Lots of it. Where? You want to go out? I'm on the last tape. You want to go out party? and doing something? What? You want, you want to do a party? party? No. No. For what? Why not? It's your birthday, dickhead. So? You don't want to do nothing nice, though? Wake up. We're going to grind you. Reach on my um, nice thing. Grab that fifth. Drink from it. And go back. So you're taking off on your birthday? Yep. All right, so so we're going to have the drink. We can't see you on your birthday. Nope. What day is your birthday for? That day. <laughs> what day of the week? The day that I'm going to be off. Where we going, yo? I might try some hair on. <laughs> <laughs> see what the hype's about. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> might, hit, might hit up a method on the plane. I wonder about... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I see all the people out there. I'm like, 
That shit must be good. Yeah. We'll try that we shit. We want some shrooms. You know, we want some shrooms in yeah. there. So, so why not? Because it's shrooms. So what? No, I don't. But cocaine heroin is? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> You can send both of them on the right of the nose. So, so I put hair on up your nose? You can if you want to. Well, thank you. Or you can stick yourself with it. I just thought the way I thought you would take hair on. No. No need. All right. Well, sir, when you take out what you want to do to your birthday, you let everybody know. I'm probably going to do the same thing as that year. What would you do last year? He was with his girl last year. No, excuse me. He was alone. I'm going to do shit. Yeah, I'm going to do shit. Yeah, I'm going to do shit. We didn't do shit with him last year. Because the, the station was shit. shut down. So we wasn't hanging out together. And he, as he does anytime he can get away with niggas not paying attention to him, <laughs> he slips away. <laughs> and whatever little people he hang out with on the east side, those are the people that might see well, him. Yeah, before that, you caught him. Of course. I slid down the stage with the game of my hair. You sit here and get drunk. <laughs> Watch Netflix. <laughs> and then you hear some key. Shit. You should have had. You're not a nigga. The fucking truck was outside. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> okay. oh, yeah, right. <laughs> he hit me. He's like, yo, where you at? I'm, I'm, I'm chilling, yo. I ain't telling what I'm doing. I'm chilling. I'm right at the studio. They probably was looking at your truck. He might. 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 So they let him run in and turn the lights off real quick and hide in KO's little office. Because <laughs> he would already you know how much. Because I wouldn't be able to turn the TV off quick enough. <laughs> and the air conditioner was on too. I had to make it cold today too. Yeah, because after the morning, it's been the person's fault that was there last. No, he wouldn't have known it. Because <laughs> I wouldn't have grabbed all my shit quick enough. <laughs> Why are you just hiding his little office? Because that probably would have been the first place in the world. Like, why are you in here with the lights on? <laughs> 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 and I'll be like this. Man, if I stand still, he won't see me. <laughs> yeah, we see you on, dog. This little ass box and your lights on. Why are you always ducking and hiding from niggas, yo? It's your birthday, yo. Niggas want to celebrate your it's birthday with you, yo. And? Maybe we'll do it next year. One, the summer one next year. Oh, shit. What are we doing next year? He wants, he wants to uh, bring down an artist. And he wants to rent out a venue and do a private concert. Okay, do that. Nigga, you ain't got five dollars for chicken wings. How the fuck you no, going? I'm talking about Put some money up for a concert. You know, we can we can get his favorite artist, uh, you know, GDL Sleep to come perform or something. Like He's that. in jail, dumbass. Oh yeah, but GDL Sleep can't come up perform. I'm sorry. Oh, I, <laughs> I got a lined up album. Up there. Up there. Yeah. So I got a year to execute. All right. So all right, that's next year. We're going this year. Motherfucker, I told you. <laughs> I'm probably gonna do the same thing I did last year. Alright, Joe. Joe, so we're gonna come right in the beginning. Nope. Charles and Hennessy. I Charles and Hennessy. I'm gonna do that shit first thing in the morning. I'm gonna wake up at like 7 o'clock and be like, shit. It's 7 02 and I ain't had a drink yet. Let's get it. You'll be right down there on Phil Fulton Avenue. For I brush my teachers. Put me right down there on Fall Avenue on the line of the liquor store. That's the only liquor store open at 2 o'clock in the morning. Liquor! Let me take something. All right. I'm a professional drink. Ah. I can tell you every liquor store in East Baltimore that's open. Yeah, at 6 o'clock in the morning. No, from Green Mountain. Sedonia. <laughs> There's a couple more up Green Mountain 25th. <laughs> Do you really want to do this? No, I'm good. Yeah. That, means, that means you drink too damn much. I can tell you every single one, you. Oh, a liquor store that opens at six o'clock in the morning. The Corinth. I mean, no, no. Sedona. The Sedona Inn. Six o'clock. You see that little open sign come on. 
My nigga, let's do this. I'm right here. You're not the only person that told me about Sedonia and being open at 6 o'clock in the morning. It was one other person. And the fact that I'm putting your name and his name in the same <laughs> hat, and you know exactly what I'm talking about. Why the fuck would you ever want to be in league with that? It would just... You and Pimlico Slim, boy. Yeah. Picking up some motherfucking McCall's and, and, oh, and milk. Oh, shit. That was his drink of chewing. I told him, I was like, yo. I told him what I said, yo, my nigga. I'm buying you. You got to drink in the cup. Now I give it. Nigga, I can get you some, some rock. I can get you any other fucking vodka. It's fucking vodka. And I'll give it in the cup. And some milk. <laughs> I'm like, Jay, you ain't your boy. Like, Jay, you got your boy. That's your man. So, wait, he drank that like all the time? Yeah. Like, all day. You know, that day. nigga house, a whole bunch of little soldiers laid out of them. Mm-hmm. My cars and milk. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They were like, it's called it a white Russian. They were like, mix it together? Yeah. It's a white Russian. Even in the summertime? Summertime, wintertime, morning time. And then they never got sick. They never- Nobody has found his face in a couple girls' life. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fact. That is a fact. That is a fact. What you mean? It's a white Russian, nigga. It's just a different type of drink. It's just like coffee and babies. That's, That's a fact. That's Which I ain't gonna lie, it's actually pretty fucking good. That's different. We're talking about vodka, <laughs> whole milk, and then you're like, guys, right, so what's the worst drink you ever had? Gin. No, actually, I should like gin. Um, yeah, gin is disgusting. No, tequila is disgusting. You try yeah, it depends on what type of tequila it is. Cat piss. Um, let me see. Uh, worst drink I've ever had. Absinthe. I've never even had that. That's just fucking um, horrific. Like it's. That's just like me buying Montebello. <laughs> I used to drink that all the time. All right. I was just like, yo, that nigga, fuck yeah, you brought that nasty ass shit. Come on, Yeah. So he was like, hey, yo, what, what's Long Island? Nigga, I'm going to shit. Nigga, you can buy a whole, a whole half a gallon for what, seven hours? Exactly. <laughs> you still buy that shit to this day. And you be drunk as shit. I'm just happy. I'm not touching that shit. I'm not drinking that. I, I drink some colors first. Yeah, I, I draw my line. I mean, Will's the one that's trying to be the professional alcoholic. They don't drink anything. I ain't, I'm not trying to be that for nobody. I'm not drinking on my calls, my black watch. Facts. Shit. Facts. I mean, I have my drink of choice, but I reach in my pocket and fund this low. Vodka it is. Fuck that. I was vodka. Fuck that. All right, so let's get on to the business, bro, skis. You know what I'm saying? This week, uh, we getting into our hip-hop mixtape reviews. Reviews. Goddamn right, naggers. So anyway, uh, Young Thug drops a, a compilation for his Stoner Life Records. Right, right. Uh, it's called Slime. Slime Language. Uh, everybody give you a round of the initial impressions. Pell. Um, I didn't want to listen to it. Still didn't want to listen to it. I wasn't excited at all. Yeah, I wasn't Will initial impressions. Hope it ain't like that last mixtape. You didn't like the last mixtape. Was it that? Yes. Oh, I had to mix up something else. <laughs> so my bad. Uh, give me your highs and lows, Will. You loved it. I actually did like this shit. <laughs> I'm not even going to lie. Y'all actually did like this shit. I, I told you you going to like it. No, I, 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 I told had, you last time we did the show. I, I said I, the nigga I had a little bit. So. It was bassy. You know what I'm saying? It was really easy, melodic. Uh, it, was, it wasn't yeah, really bad. Then you can actually understand what the nigga was saying. what the nigga was saying. I mean, no. the hooks wasn't that bad. There were, there were times when he was inaudible. Oh, but yeah. It wasn't the end of the world. I'm not saying the whole thing either. That shit wasn't like, you could understand what he was saying. This shit. This shit actually. Yeah. I would enjoy it. I enjoyed it. It was, you know, it wasn't the end of the world for me. Uh, Phil, highs and lows. It was cool. I ain't gonna say it was great. 
It's a feature on every single song. I think my favorite song on the album was the joint with Jacquees. Um, the, it's called January first. Do y'all want to interview? I mean, not interview. Y'all want to review Jacquees's album that came out like a couple weeks ago? I'm with that, but you know, Lloyd dropped too. He just dropped some shit too. Lloyd dropped the whole new album. Oh, all right, then we're both. <laughs> both, 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 both. <laughs> um, but um. Like you said, it was some parts that were inaudible. Um, it was like so. I feel like Young Thug to me is is either a hit or miss. It's either it's, it's either really good or it's really bad. Right. And it's just like this joint was like <laughs> it was like half was really good. You like it. You like it. It's like half was really Don't good. Hate you. It's like, half was, this shit all like it's like half was really good, and the other half was like, why is why does this why does this exist? Why does this here? Yeah, like why does this even exist? Like again, Young Thug is a real hit and miss for me, but that's my opinion. Um, I would have to agree with Will. I really enjoyed this album. Um, the the production was really high value here. Um, I loved him on this project. My problem with a lot of the features, I really wasn't the biggest fan of some of these features. They weren't polished enough. Um, some of them were just rambling and talking. Obviously, they've been hanging around Lil Baby a little bit. So, like, that talk rap flow thing, some, some niggas think that that's the shit, and it's really not. Um, the downside, there is a downside. There is a sharp downside. Is that Because there are a number of records on this project. Once you get past, once you get to that seventh song, eighth song, it, it becomes so fucking annoying, bro. Like it becomes, it's like, and I got to a point where I'm listening to it on a job site, so I don't, I'm not going nowhere. It's not the end of the damn day, but I'm just like, God. It, it's like almost like every hook starts to sound the same, every verse starts to sound the same. You know what I'm saying? It just starts to get annoying. And it starts to get to a point where I'm just like, oh, just, just shut the fuck, just shut, just shut, just shut the fuck up. And I just, just how it got, it got to me. It just got annoying. Um, but salute, if if you were to take that last half of the album out of it and you know gave it another project to itself, I probably love them records. But I think it's just the vibe just wears you out. You know what I'm saying? That constant because the damn production is constant. It's the same. Tempo the entire album. It keep you up. It was keeping you there. It was keeping you coked up. I wasn't coked up. I'm dead sober. I'm working. It's just that mile and sweat. That's it. You know what I'm saying? Um, what could have been done better? Not shorter. Shorter, shorter than it, definitely. But. I really feel like there should have been changes in the production at some point. Something to kind of bring me back in. There was some times where the skit was switched up and it would be great, but huh? A skit would have worked. Yes, something like that. Something to kind of like re-engage me, to refresh me, to make me, you know, get back in. It just got to a point where it just got annoying. And then it, once it starts getting annoying, then I don't care how creative you are. You just turn the fuck off. So uh, with that being said, shout out to them. Uh, let's get to the high. Uh, let's get into rating this between one and five, Mike. Yeah. Excuse me. Um, lurks between one and five, Mike's pill. I give it to high. Will. Two eight. Ooh, two five. So let's talk about the production between one and five, Mike's will. Three. Three point five. I am pill. Three, three. Okay, let's talk about the Florida project. How one song flows into the next in relation to the whole project. I agree with you. Well, I will go to three. It flowed very well for me. Uh, let's talk about the artwork on the project, how it relates to the music. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, right now. Uh, no, no hands for sound language. You just got loose line coming down. I get it. All right, I'll go with that as well. Definitely giving it a three. 
Uh, let's talk about the overall project between one and five mics. Will I'm gonna go with a two point eight. Phil, I'm gonna give it a overall. I'm give it. I give it two point five. Okay, that's what's up. Um, don't forget. Oh, excuse me. Is this hip hop? No, this is rap. You agree? This is rap. Yeah. All right. Does this have any replay value? Will obviously yes. A little bit. Phil. No. And I'm never listening to this again. Would you recommend this to a friend? No. Sure. I'm not exactly sure who I would recommend this to. I, I'm not saying that this is unrecommendable, but, but I mean, but it's if not, you're a young thug fan, you already know it. So right. It's, it's not one of them joints up on the streets and brag about. Like, oh, did you hear that? That slide language. Yeah, like, Eight or whatever the hell this was. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, here we go. Uh, the next one we're gonna get into. Right now is uh low baby harder than ever. Now, it will. What was your initial impression when I when I dropped that link when you saw that? What was you thinking? I did not want to listen to this shit. Really? Wow. Pill. It was the only way you ever gonna get me to listen to a little baby project. Excellent. It's the only way. Like, this, 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 this environment, this <laughs> this this podcast, this real review situation was the only way you ever uh -huh. got me this Shout out movie. to Stars, who challenged me live on Every's Land to listen to the whole album and do a review on this. This one is for you, sir. Oh, <laughs> so anyway, uh, Will, I'm, I'm most interested in your opinion. What are your highs and lows on this shit? Yeah. That shit was hard, though. I, I knew it! I knew it! I knew it! I knew it! The whole time I was listening to it, I'm like, yo, gonna love this shit. Listen, now look at that. I'm listening to it. Shoot me now. I'm like, this shit is hard. I'm like, yo, I'm not gonna lie. Why does someone to sit there and fight this shit? I'm like, yo. Is this shit is hard. It's just, Will loves yeah. ignorance, yo. <laughs> he revels in it, like yo. It, it is like it's like crack to him, yo. It seeps into his every nature. Yo. What is this? Is Baz so was hard. Yeah, it was hard. Bank was hard. Right. Throwing shade was hard. I knew that bank was hard. Shit, what up? So, yeah, the nigga didn't let me down. I'm, he didn't let him down. I mean, it's, it is what it is, bro. Because I, I was going in, I was going in like, you know, I don't want to listen to bullshit. I was like, fuck the little baby. And, the, baby. and I pressed play, you know, I'm like, all right. I'm like, yeah. I'm just I'm like, this is all. Like, I mean, you know what? Salute to you, my nigga, because you caught me. Mm -hmm. so now you're a little baby. Too. I didn't say that. She but like, well, I said that. I have more respect for him. And when he put out another project, I probably know. would listen to it. Fuck that, bro. Okay, so Pill, what are your highs and lows on the project? So I felt like his lyric, the lyrics, the lyrics were so simple that it, it was just like like there, there was nothing complex like at all in this project. It was. But you don't always so, want complex. You just want that simple shit. Like this shit was so irritating. It was like, what do you say? He said. uh um, some, 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 wham, 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 like a baby, like yo, I ain't gonna shit was on. Yo, you can't, yo, I quit, yo, I quit, yo, I quit, I quit, yo, 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 I quit, he um and of course the the track with uh Drake came on and uh, that's the single of course and Drake's his favorite rapper so it was just like he's listening to this shit he's just going rapping on rapping everywhere yeah and it's just like yo why do you like this shit yo you don't like this shit no like why do you like this shit like this shit is so fucking simple and it's so yes the beats are okay but in the in the just everything else is so simple and it's it's nothing changed. Like, like, <laughs> like, just like the Young Thug project and how it sounded all the same. This the baby sounds the exact same all the way around. Yes, you had your 
one or two, three maybe tracks that was dope that that all right, cool, you got me. But no, I'm I'm not gonna sit here and say that no, no, fuck it, no. No. <laughs> no. 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 First of all, Moneybag Yo had better album. I think the last joint we did with Moneybag Yo, I enjoyed that. Mm. Better than this. Correct. Now, I'm going to agree with both of them. Like, the shit was hard, but the shit was way too simple. <laughs> like, the shit. Like, yo, sometimes you don't want to then think of us if you just want to just. Not, rock no, no, out. no, 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 no. Don't get me that. Yo, sometimes you just want to rock out. Yo, if, you, if you're at work and you're doing what you're doing, you don't want to sit there and. Think about what, what they say. You just want to just rock out, yo. And that's it. Damn, I'm thinking about it. It's like, you got to put me in a certain type of vibe. You know what I'm saying? Bro? Now, that is what I felt like was accomplished in this project, is that he was he did a very good job of bringing you into his world. Maybe in his world, it, it ain't about the lyrical miracle, whatever, which we already knew that from the beginning because his name is Little Baby. But I was expecting a monicum of creativity more so uh, not next true. lyrical complexity i was looking for creativity in the drum talk. to me it was like the whole time i listened to the album i kept thinking to myself man it must be nice to be on the hottest rap label in the world hmm so it's easy as fuck to get the hottest beats from the hottest producers and all i gotta do is sit back and say what i need to say and hey if i need a hook i got corvo hey if i need a hook I got uh I got who's the other nigga offset. I got this person, I got Yachty, I got I, yo, I'm surrounded by superstars that all I need to do is make a call or they gonna come roll up in the studio and then we just gonna make ill shit. Um the other component is he had a great story. I feel like the way I feel like the way he's presenting his story, I enjoy it. Um so the problem is he got out rap on most of his albums. Of course. So, Star Lilo, I'll rap. Money Bag Yo, I'll rap. Young Thug, I'll, I'll rap. rap. Young Little Uzi, I'll rap. So, like, <laughs> I'll set. I'll fucking rap. So, what do you like to do? <laughs> I mean, you know, he just wanted to be in the room, dog. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> that was probably another big when breakdown. He, when he said that shit, wah, 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 Yo, you know, don't flip out on me. You are not whoever the fuck he's talking about. Fuck you. And yeah. he was like, like yeah, and yo, he was yo. like, yo, it was the reference to yo, his name is Little Baby. Yo, I got that. Yo, but yo, you could have just that was not the double entendre. Like, like, it was yeah, just you like, yo, even if you even, even if you wanted to reference your name, you could have did something slick with Google Gaga or something like that. Yeah. And I would have, and I would have, I would have respected that so much more than wham wham wham. Did like, you just say yeah, yeah, man, uh, uh, Google Gaga? Like, I would have respected, respected, yes, respected that more than wham wham wham. Oh, all <laughs> oh, oh, real. Niggas up there. Google Gaga, nigga. <laughs> I love you, my nigga. Oh, 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 yeah, I'm gonna flip it on you. Gaga Google. Ah! <laughs> Jay is that new MC, nigga. Oh, shit. I got my strengths now. Right. So, anyway, um, at the end of the day, like, I, I, it's not like the nigga been rapping a long time. He really only been rapping for like a year and a half. At the most, maybe two years. But he did a way better job than Tenor Day. <laughs> so I salute, uh, salute, yeah. little baby. I respect it. I'm rocking with it. Hey, just to come up bad. He just came up on niggas. Yeah. I'm not mad for a nigga that could come through with the come up. Yeah. I feel like he did a better job than Yachty did. Yeah. On Yachty last album. Let's go. So let's talk about this joint, man. Lyrics between one and five mics. Will. Nigga, I swear to God, don't get, don't, don't, don't get it. Man. I'm gonna go with probably. Yo, don't even. <laughs> I swear to God. I'm gonna <laughs> say. I would say I would give it a solid, <laughs> solid. Uh, 4.2. What the fuck is wrong with you, nigga? What is wrong with you, nigga? No. <laughs> shit, yo. Yo, fuck. No, I give it 
you for me. Nigga, what the hell wrong with you? Wham, wham, wham. Yeah, right, right. Bill, where you at with? I'm giving a solid 1.5. <laughs> the wham, wham, wham. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get on lyrics 1.8, my nigga. 1.8. And I'm being genetic. <laughs> I'm showing mad love right now. Let's talk about the production between 1 and 5 mics. Pill. I'm going to give it a 2.5. All right, now you're tripping. Will. I give it a solid 3. Okay, I'm going to give that a 3.4. If you can make a nigga with 1.8 lyrics... Sound like a 3.2 <laughs> nigga? Your production is pretty hard. <laughs> so let's talk about the floor project, how one song flows into the next in relation to the whole project. Phil? I'm going to give it three. Well, three. I want to give this a three and a half. Yes, I really enjoyed the floor of the project. Let's talk about the artwork on the project and how it relates to the music. I'm going to give it three. Two. Yeah, motherfucker, like two five. Man. It's just a, it's a hand drawn of him holding money to his ear with a bunch of QC jewelry. Hmm. And wham, wham, wham. <laughs> so anyway, the overall project between one and five mics. Will kick it off. This got water in it. Let me go. <laughs> Overall project. <laughs> I'm just say <laughs> what I want to say. I'm not going to say. Please don't say. No, nah, you know, <laughs> say whatever you want to say. <laughs> Overall, I'm give it a three point two. Well, I'm not mad. That's fair. I'm gonna give it a solid three. I ain't even gonna front. I I I enjoyed it more than I should have. Shout out to Stars. Um, it didn't deserve all of that that he gave when I interviewed him, but I I, I respect that. I respect the hustle. Phil, two point five. I respect that as well. So is this hip hop? No. It's rap. Why? 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 Facts. Um, does this have any replay value on a personal level? No. Sure. I got a couple songs out there. All right. Um. Would you recommend this to a friend? Nope. Yeah. If if the person sells a lot of drugs and they shoot niggas and they on the run from the cops, this is it. This is this is your shit right here. This is your mix. You right in here. Like, you know, you're a young Baltimore nigga and you dropped out of high, you dropped out of middle school, this is you right here. Fine. Then you know, this person you you ain't gonna do nothing but murder niggas. So here's the soundtrack for your life right here. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully you can get come up, get inspired and come up out of this. You know what I'm saying? Wow, wow, wow. Win, win, So, uh, with that being said, don't forget to uh, subscribe to the uh, to our channel. It's hip hop mixtape review. Um, excuse me, the real reviews, uh, or the real music reviews. Shut the fuck up. So, uh, been longer than that, sir. But um, definitely make sure you subscribe. Show some love. We love y'all. Uh, real reviews right here, bbcradio.com. Blah. All right, so the next one we doing is on our list. I'm trying to pull that list up now while we at it. Is the Daniel Caesar? That was my curveball I threw at y'all just yeah, to give y'all a little R and B vibe today. Um, it, it was uh, not a new album. This is called uh, who was that? Freudian, Freudian, Freudian. F R E U D I A N. Okay. So, uh, initial impressions all the way around the room. Will, when you saw it in the link, who the fuck is this? <laughs> that was a pretty much normal expected yeah. response. Uh, Phil? That was mine, too. What is this? Song? Why is this a good? Who is this? Daniel Caesar? So, <laughs> I started listening to it. I was in the car. You know, so I was just having a walk outside while I was listening to it. I was going to pull on. He was like, who are you listening to? Yeah. I said, Dad, I have no idea who this is. He said, it sounds pretty good. It's, it's getting back to that. Uh, it sounds like y'all just music is getting back to where music used to be. I said, shit, man, I hate this album. 
But that was that was a little funny moment. Damn, he's crazy. All right, well, what? Oh, initial impressions. Oh, you said you, want, you didn't know. You said what the fuck is it? Da, da, da. All right, highs and lows then, nigga. Who who taking? Uh, tell, give me the highs and lows first. Um, I'm so like I said. Oh, I said go off air. I'm, I'm glad it started with the single, um, because that was the only way I could pinpoint who this person was. Where um, if it would have started anywhere else, I probably would have been lost still. Until the single came on, like, oh, I know this guy. Right. But other than that, I was you know completely lost. Um, I did love the fact that her came on the project. Um, she mm-hmm. she did her thing. That was probably one of the highlight songs on the project. Um, everything else kind of lost me. Um, I'm gonna say I'm probably like the first two to three tracks. Everything else kind of went downhill from there. Like it didn't keep my attention. What you mean? Was it was it too slow or something like that? It just wasn't. I don't know. I guess I just lost my interest. It, 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 it lost my interest for some reason. Um, it wasn't. I mean, it was, I mean, the vibe was good. It just just lost my interest. Mm. I never. I can't tell you if it was the production or the writing or anything of that nature. It just I like kind of just blacked off and went into another universe. Maybe that's a good thing, but I. Yeah, it just didn't capture my capture my mind to want to dig deeper into the project. Well, yes. Highs and lows. Good question, because you're trying to figure it out. I'm trying to figure it out too. Ah, didn't really have any highs. Damn. I mean, he said he didn't have any highs. Yeah, that's good. That, that's a change for me. <laughs> I mean, as far as lows, I mean, kind of sort of on the slow side. Mm-hmm. And to me, I, maybe it was just me. It sounded like it was just all over the place a little bit. But it didn't. I mean, I'm a somewhat on a fan. It just that just didn't catch me. It's like, you know what? Let me try it again. I was like, no, it just didn't. One and done. Wow. Um surprise. I thought Will would have taken to this a little bit more. Um kind of expected Hill to kind of take it the way he took it. This was more of that old school um R and B borderline neo soul vibe. Uh this also reminded me a lot of John Legend. And that wasn't the end, but not any of the good things that I like about John Legend, <laughs> all of the things that I don't like about John Legend. And that's because he writes about love from such an innocent kind of standpoint. It's kind of a, it's real grown and, and, and very uh, idealistic point of view. It's not what we've come to become used to. We are so used to our, uh, was that Joe Buttons refers to as dirty macking. We used to all of our R and B music, yeah, bitch. I'ma get them draws, I'ma rip them draws up, and I'ma like, woo, beat the pussy, beat the pussy, ah, ah, ah. like you know what I'm saying. Keep, 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 you know, you know what I mean. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, like it's too old feeling sometimes. It didn't. It, it sounds probably why it. I really couldn't get into it. Just, See, but the thing about old music, old mu- it, it, it sounds like old music, but old music had an aesthetic quality, an emotional quality that's missing on it. It's so slow, and he's singing, and it does have a vibe. It's a vibe. Don't don't. Yo, Daniel Caesar is a vibe, my nigga. I feel like he still has some growing to do. Um, but I don't feel like he's found that emotional center. Something to draw from to bring me in to just turn me into a mega fan. There are, you know, saying a few songs that I really enjoyed off of here. I'm not like y'all. I I did finish the album. I enjoyed it. I listened to it again. Um, and it's some of the songs have become a part of my playlist. However, it's still some records that annoy the fuck out of me, and I still feel like this 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 could have been better. 
what for with what? I ain't figured out yet. <laughs> so with that being said, uh, let's get into rating this between one and five mics. Uh, pill lyrics between one and five mics. I'll give it a three. Will? I'll do the same with y'all. Uh, let's talk about the production. Uh, I'm not even getting into the vocal. I mean, it's not like he was doing my vocals that I need to go into. I think we can all agree his vocal range is somewhere between 2.5 and 3. Yeah. So let's just go like that. So so we'll say production between one and five mics. Will? Phil? I'll give it a 2.8. Let's talk about the flow of the project. Got one song flows into the next in relation to the whole project. Phil? I'll give it a 2. Will? Keep it All right, I'll give it a 3. Let's talk about the uh, artwork on the project, how it relates to the music. Uh, there you go, right, right there, sir. So, Will, between one and five months. Five. <laughs> All right, Phil. For the artwork, uh, if it's the five, it's a dope, it's a dope picture. It's a dope picture. Listen to the album. <laughs> I'm so fucked up. I want to give it a three. Um, overall project between one and five, Mike Phil. Two two point eight. Well. All right, I'll go two five. Well, no, I'll go. Yeah, I had to go two eight with y'all. Mm -hmm. I had to go two eight. I'm not gonna say two point five, and I was about to jump to three, but I'm like, yeah, that's just too much. So I'll go right there with a, with a two point eight with y'all. All right, so is this real R and B? I will say yes. Yeah. Uh, does this have any replay value? Obviously not for y'all too. No. For me, yeah. Uh, some song. Um, would you recommend it to a friend? No chip. You would think they would love it. Yeah. Me. Yeah, I would. Cool. So, all right. Well, don't forget. Check us out. Subscribe. Real, real reviews. BBCRadio.com. We love y'all. Check us out for the next one. Damn. All right. The next joint mm. um, is, and I hate this. We got two more left to go, brothers. So just, just hold tough with me, and then we can be a fucking bottom of this bitch. All right, so we got uh, J Verse changed his name to Verse. Verse. I don't know why. I don't. I, I like J Verse. I thought J Verse was dope. He's growing into it. Uh, this verse, verse. Yeah. Weird. Verse. Well, what you think about the name change? But what is it? Is it I mean, verse or oh, it's just verse? Okay. I mean, because every time he came through, he never called him David, he called him Bird. Facts. So, so him dropping the jail off, it just wasn't no big deal. Smart observation, sir. So did I. All right, so give me your uh, initial impressions when you saw it drop in the new check. Honestly, I was scared shit. Mm. I'm terrified. Like I hadn't heard nothing from him in a while, uh, project wise. Um nothing nothing project wise since like through my dog trades. Um, we did another one after that. Time. Yeah, we did uh, like one or two more joints after that. Whoops. Um but anyway, um scared shit was didn't know what to expect. Um didn't know what direction we were going into. We were going into some street shit. So corporate pop, I just had no idea. Mm -hmm. Looking at looking at how Davis, uh, you know, how he carries himself now, it, it, it could have been any better. So that's right. Well, initial impression. Holy shit, let's do this. <laughs> um, I was ready. I was I was I was interested um, because of the. You know, he always professionally emails me his uh, stuff, packaged properly, you know. It's always done professionally, and I, I respect that, you know. Uh, and of all of the other artists in Baltimore City, he actually sends me the music before it comes out. 
Now, we didn't get a chance to review it before it came out. But, you know, life goes on. Shout out to you, my nigga. You know, we still like you. But, um, all right, let's get the highs and lows going. Will, kick it off. The highs are like the way, the way he's coming to his own. Mm. The only low that I had is just, I don't feel like it was all low. Mm. As far as, I can't really say track selection. It was just, and I don't see where you could rearrange it to make it work. Right. But I mean, that's pretty much it. I mean, I, I enjoyed it. It was, it was a good listen. I mean, it just, I just didn't like the, um, the track on it. You got to. Because you had like some, some trap shit that it would have like, me, I'm a pop or whatever the fuck that shit was. That's his new wave. And it just, it didn't slowly take off. It was just like train wreck straight to it. I'm like, damn, like, it warm me up to that shit just a little bit. Fact. You just was like, damn, we're going to trap the next one. We're going straight pop EDM or whatever the fuck that shit was. Boom. I'm like, it warm me up to that. You just, you took from a straight banger to this and it just caught me off guard. Well, I was not expecting that. And that also goes into my eyes. I like the way he did it. It was just, yeah. And I was like, all right, yeah, you know what I fuck with. Can't be the same old verse forever. Gotta get to the, gotta get to the Gatlin. So, uh, Pill, highs and lows. Tom was green. It was a little scatterbrain. Um, it was definitely all over the place. Um, I felt like this was Jay versus commercial I need a hit I need a single project. Like it was just like all right on, on this project we're getting a single artist project that's going to play on free. And that's what I felt this project was. This was that I don't care where it plays, one of these songs is going. So I'm I'm gonna put a, a trap joint in, put a pop joint on here. I don't put a, a song for bitches on here, but this one that you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I agree with that. I like that I agree with that true that. So um that, you wait them. that uh it, it, it was definitely just like I said in the beginning, you know, just looking at him, you could tell, all right, dog, you're not the same verse like before. So again, I was I was either gonna get the pop EDM or I was gonna get some bars and he actually gave me both. So which is why I'm scattered right. Um other than that, that's that's really about it. The production was pretty cool. I mean, the production was pretty cool. I'm sorry, production was solid. Mm-hmm. Production was was pretty solid. Um, and it it ended right on point. Like it didn't drag on. It didn't like it didn't try to kill you with, you know, six hundred songs. Yeah, with with 12, 13, 18 songs. Like no, it, it ended perfectly. Right when it was supposed to, right before I got it. <laughs> so that, that's my. Um, this project, you know, took a few records that were already out there and then kind of smashed some new joints in there. And so Live Life for Life, the Jay Pavarotti joint, that was something that he released actually last year around this time. Um, one of my favorite records of his that he's ever released of all time. Like it's on Google Play iTunes for purchase. I bought it. It's a phenomenal record, man. Like I really felt like he should have pushed that joint, created the video for it. But I understand, you know, life is what it is. Um, Master Plan is a record that was out before, you know, on his on his SoundCloud or whatever. That was a dope record. Shout out to that. It was definitely a good record. Um, the new record's predicament. Um, what I want, I think is new. Uh some days and demons. Um I don't know how to describe those, man. Like <laughs> man, it's a, like you said, it's a new wave of verb, uh excuse me, verse. You've got a whole new playing field. I haven't seen enough growth. Hmm. I've seen the growth from these joints, but Verse ain't a new kid on the block no more. So I can't give you, I can't give you, I can't give you the, uh, what do they call it? Like you give a nigga a break because they knew 
You know what I'm saying? It's like, oh, he's going to learn. Da, da, da. Like, bro, how many projects have you done by now? At some point, you got to come with the power play. You didn't change your name now. You got to come with a power play. That means when I press play, I need to be blown away. Demons didn't do that for me. Did it do it for y'all? Did it make you go, oh, he's me, he's got it. And then once we got into the second record, it was cool. Like, I wasn't tripping. Like, I, to be, and to be honest with you, all of these ones are cool. But they were just cool. They weren't like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Except for when we got to the to the to the to the J Pavarotti joint. J Pavarotti joint stood out 1000 percent as he already know how I feel about that record, man. I told him I wanted, I told him I had paid to shoot the video, nigga, because that's how that's how I think about that record. But I really feel like he hasn't with him having a label. You got artists signing you under your label. You got you got albums under your under your belt. This was a moment you could have taken for yourself. The name change. All right, this the boss. I'm stepping out here. I'm dropping my nuts on these niggas' foreheads. This is it. You know what I'm saying? Verse for the for the for the 299 <laughs> for the 2018 and forever. And I didn't feel that claim. I felt good music. The vibe was good. All right. Shout out to you. Yo, look, look. Here's another three mic project for you, Jay Burrs. I mean, do I need to go into the? I mean, is there anything we need to go into the? All right. Normally, we would go into the lyrics between one and five. All right. We're all going to say somewhere between two and three. All right. On the lyrics, we all going to say somewhere between two and three for the production. I mean, am I wrong? No. We're going to say somewhere between. Two, two and a half on the floor of the project. Yeah. Uh, the artwork, you know, we'll give you a one. That shit is horrible. And overall, like I said, like we, we were somewhere around three. And if we didn't know you, it probably fall to a 2.8 or 2.5. Yeah. Well, that's more for the overall project. Yeah. You know, I'm. Oh, Will, are you disagreeing? Please don't. I don't want to speak for you. Yeah. If you if you feel completely different, please. Do that. Right. And it's, we we love Burst. That's our that's our family, dog. Like he's been down with us since we was down on Linwood over east. Woo! Like shit. long right. time ago. Right. He been down with us for a long time. So like salute to him. And you know what I'm saying? He know he always got support from over from the BBC or whatever. But that's just the reality on the album. Um but I love the growth. I love the evolution. I love to hear that he's come such a long way. You know, and I look forward to getting to know more, um, to getting some better music later on. Uh, but I will enjoy, continue to uh, enjoy Live Life for Life. That's just one of my favorite albums of all time. So anyway, um, is this a hip hop album? No. Does this have replay value on the first one? No. Some songs. Some songs. I've got two or three. <laughs> and would you recommend this to a friend? Got to because it's boring. So, uh, everybody, if you haven't done so, subscribe to the Real Reviews, bbcradio.com, uh, or Google Play or iTunes with the, the Real Reviews uh, or Real Music Reviews. We'll check you out then. Have a good day. Peace. Last join of the night. We're going to fuck home after this. Yo, I'm happy to hell to finally get to this one. Uh, She's been wanting me to do a review on the joint for a long time. We have evaded multiple reviews because we slick like that. But, you know, she dropped the album this year. Definitely an interesting project. So we had to put it on the chopping block. Now, the TDFMC project is called Raw Uncut. Initial impressions when I dropped it in the group chat, ill will. Nephi bars. Yeah, that's the only thing you were thinking. Yeah. All right, no, not naked. Not naked. Not naked. All right, Pill, what was you thinking? Um, I was just thinking it was about time. It was a long time coming. I think it was coming, but we was gonna sit down and talk about it. Especially because Nappy loves when we give her like criticism on our side. 
I don't know. She always yeah, like the credits. Yeah, you don't be in the room. This is she'll smile at y'all and then try to curse me the fuck out. Oh really? Or or, or Imani will fucking try to like. Yo, what is wrong with you, my nigga? Nuffs and all your hate mail to Jack. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Yeah. yeah so, don't be talking. I mean, it was the way, way it was trying to be. Well, you know what I'm saying? I need y'all feedback. You know what I'm saying? That's the best. That's what happened. Bro, was all this. So I, I feel like yeah. I feel like that's I, always good. I made it a point when I when I first heard it when it first came out. She was like, please give me feedback. I made a point to touch her directly. I'll talk. Yeah. What? So uh high, high, highs and lows on the project. Who wants to go first? I don't find the text All right. So well, highs and lows. Once again, highs. The group. Facts. Now we did something. It sounds completely left field that I wasn't expecting. Right. To the to the videos, to the, to the bars, it was just mm -hmm. completely different. And so she definitely did. Yeah, that shit like a book, nigga. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you see that shit? Like all them goddamn, all words. them goddamn words. Yeah. I mean, I really didn't have any lows. I was enjoying it because mostly because you just you just hit it the, the different now. Mm -hmm. So I really didn't have loads on that. It's one of the things that made it enjoyable to listen to because you just it's something completely different. She, I don't know if it's the right word. I want to say more emotional. I don't know if the mm -hmm. like human is mm -hmm. the right one. More like sensual. Just like in like in the um the one video, it's just just completely different. So she's showing her versatility. I'm like, all right, cool. Like I said, I didn't have any lows on it. Mm. Hill, let's go. So you read your book deal. I'm gonna read it not word for word, but I'm definitely read it. So I told her, uh, it's a really good project. I can hear where you take where you were taking risks and you stepped outside your comfort zone. Um, I told her I need to sit with it a couple more times. Um, I think, um, I told her I think raw and uncut was not what I got, but I guess I was looking for more uncut. Um, if you knew what I meant, like the new age, like the new age world can flow. But, um, but I said, um, there's more of your touch in your own life. Um, I told her the song with Fizzle was hot, but I didn't think it was a good fit for it. Um, favorite songs and motive in my in my zone was my favorite song on the project. Um, the intro was perfect. Uh, of course, the, the single wave was on there, and I told her I really wanted to see a visual for Lotus. Um, and then when the visual for Lotus came out, it put it put the it put that song totally into perspective. Um, I think we talked about this project before, where I said that uh, uh, motives featuring Raw Dreams. Um, in the context of this album, makes that song sound like uh, a master gym. Like it's like mm -hmm. one of the highlight songs in the project. By itself, it doesn't stand out that well. But in the context of this project, Motives is like a standout project, standout song. And um, even still, I, I, every, every time I pull up this album I'm to listen to it, I listen to it in my zone at least twice before I, I turn, to turn the album on. Uh, which mm -hmm. is the last joint on the project. I think, um, just like I'm going to agree, you know, it was her definitely stepping out and and um, stepping out of her comfort zone and showing you, yo, that I can keep up. You know what I'm saying? That I, I, I got what it takes. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is uh, a different nephew here. This is not the the same sheltered nephew. Like, she... Even beforehand, the project, that was, that was a couple of interviews she went on. She walked out of one, you know what I'm saying? And it's just, it's just, this is a different type of team that we got we're doing on right now. I like it. Word. So, uh, I've been ducking this and I've been ducking this review for a while. Um, not because I felt like the project was bad, but because I had critiques and I didn't know how she would take it or other people because this album is that good. You know what I'm saying? This is the album where a lot of people are going to defend it and be like, yo, Jay, you're 
fucking out of your mind. <clears throat> and I'll be like, yeah, probably. <laughs> um, this is a for an indie artist on their own dollar. This is a major studio sounding Thanks. project. C Biz did a phenomenal job with the production. She did a phenomenal job stepping up. Like you said, she's way more confident. She's way more skilled. You can hear the confidence. You can hear the you can hear the writing improvements. You can hear the time being taken to to, to, to put together great concepts. You know everything from wave uh, to choices to lotus to these are even motives. These are con concept songs that like have specific points. They're talking either to specific people or about specific situations. Um, and not necessarily meaning that like she's got a specific, I'm just saying, but like it, 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 she learned how to key in on real human moments. And that's what helped us, you know, get to the, to the album. Um, feeling like to me was, was definitely one of the best joints on there because that intro, like I said, the best way that you, you, you gotta have a great intro song, bro. She had that gangster intro song. It's definitely one of those joints that like lets you know that this ain't a game off break. You go right into an up tempo record with Wade. Like Pill said, and I, I definitely agree. Motive sounds like a whole different monster within the confines of the album. You know, um, you know, I love motives, but I was shaky on motives. But I, I in the album, rock solid. Rock solid. I ain't got shit to say about that. You know what I'm saying? And then you go in into mind games and self-made and choices and you know what I mean, all these records. And like you said, in my zone. This is a phenomenal body of work with so many great elements in it and great performances, but there are some flaws. When you go into choices, the mix is horrible because there's too much effects on the vocal. So shit is everywhere. You can kind of, you can barely understand what they're saying. That's number one. Number two, the mix is, ho uh, mix is horrible. I'm going back to that in choices. Uh... And I'm just double saying it because it just it took me out of the, the, the song sometime. You know what I mean? And it was such a great piece of production. And I feel like Fizzles and her did a great job. I don't agree with you. I feel like Fizzles was a great point. I felt like they might have polished their pen work up a little bit. But I'm with it. I got I kind of understood where they were going, but I don't feel like they really hit it like they could have hit it. I really felt like I understood the concept. It was just, all right. This was just going as hard as, I, as he should have, maybe. I don't know. No, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So um, the other component is there are moments in Nephi's performance where a bar isn't completed. Or it seems like she stumbled over a word. Or because either she's overwriting or overflowing and it's hard for people to understand unless you're an mc and the only reason why i understand because i used to be an mc is that sometimes i would write i write eight bars but when i wrap it it may not be in the same cadence when i wrap it out my mouth it's not going to come out the same cadence in my head so i'm trying to get it to the cadence that i have it in my head but it's not blending with the beat so like in your mind and in reality, it's two different things. So she might have all of these ideas and all this stuff going down on the record and it's working perfectly in her mind, but it still seems like she hasn't mastered the execution of the flow onto the track with the words. There's still some small issues there. But if you're not really, a, if you're not into rhyme play and, and, and being a writer, you're not gonna pick up on it. Because her strong personality, her strong presentation covers up a lot of that stuff. Um, but outside of that, great album. Uh, I can't, I cannot comment it enough. One of the best albums to come out from a female artist in this region. And it's been a long time, bro. And I'm not even trying to say that the down, oh man, like, yo, Monty Marino came out with a phenomenal album this year. Like, Great body of work, but when you're talking about the the time that was dumped into the making of Nephi's album, I mean the sound quality, and then keying in on these emotional points and pulling up these concepts, 
so very important. You know what I'm saying? I felt like Monty did a great job, but once again, I'm not here to talk about Monty. This is about Neff. So, like, shout out to them. Y'all did a great job. Keep putting out great music. Um, you showed us the, uh, the diversity, our capability, you know what I mean, and her and, and, and evolution. Because we've heard her from mixtapes to, you know, the project before this. And she's morphed herself into different characters for each one. And, and I love what she's become for this project. Even the artwork is on some next level shit. So salute to her. And let's get into this highs and lows, bro. I'm sorry. Lyrics between one and five mics. Pill. It's rating time. That's what I should say. Um, lyrics, I'll give it, I'll give it a three and a half. Okay, well. Okay, I'll give it a three. Let's talk about the production between one and five mics. Will? Pell? Three and a half. Definitely giving it a three and a half. Let's talk about the Florida Project, how one song flows into the next and relates to the whole project. Pell? Four. Will? I'm going to go four as well, sir. Definitely with you on that. Let's talk about the artwork and how it relates to the music. Will? Give it five. Pill? Five. Definitely will give it a five. Uh, let's talk about the overall project between one and five mics. Will? Give it a I just like the diversity. Gotcha. Pill. I'm doing a 3.9. Ah! I'm doing a 3.9. I'm sleeping, man. You know what? I think I'm off camera now. Back up, yo. You put Jay in there, yo. That's fucked up. You put Jay in there, yo. Da, da, da. <laughs> Oh shit, what is that on the floor right there? <laughs> oh, you see something on the floor? Yeah, hey, you're right. Oh shit, it's one right there, it's one right behind you. Yeah. Holy shit, it's full of people. <laughs> <laughs> um, niggas ain't never gonna talk to me again, man. It is what it is, yo. I'm gonna give it a 3.5. I know y'all wanna fucking shoot me in the head or whatever, but that's just where I'm at with it. Y'all know how I feel when you start talking at four. You start talking at four, you talking about legendary. Life changing music, and even though this is really great for her, this ain't life changing. We ain't got to that space yet. But as far as like, I really feel like she did a phenomenal job on this one. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I bought it. I I still play it on a regular basis to myself. So anyway, I bought it too. Um, is this hip hop? Yes. Yeah. Agreed. Does this have replay value on a personal level? Yes. Okay. Uh, would you recommend this to a friend? Yeah. I mean, I played it for several people, and they were like, who is this? Oh, you know, it's not for TV. Well, she's dope. Where is she from? Baltimore? For real? Yeah. Why? Where did I find that? Everywhere. <laughs> yeah, that's good, yeah. Everywhere. So shout out to you, Neff. You know what I'm saying? You know how we love you, man. You always got the support of the BBC. It is what it is. Um, it is what it is. We love you, my G. This is The Real Reviews. We out here. Don't forget, subscribe to the channel, Real Reviews. Put the Real Reviews the music. Right there. Put one of them buttons right there that don't exist. And the bell. And hit the bell to, to get the notifications. Um, Subscribe, Google Play, or iTunes to get the audio. And subscribe to YouTube.com forward slash BBC Life the, for the channel. Uh, subscribe to the uh, channel right now. And that way you can get up, keep up with all the podcasts. All of the uh, videos and everything else. We love y'all. That's it. Every now we out this bitch. Peace. And real reviews. We out this bitch. Hair grease. My feet. We out this bitch. Yo, turn the AC on, please. I beg of you, my friend. My friend. My friend. My friend. My friend. Please. Please. My please. Friend.